What you doing? Um, working on uh, booking ahead this year, more so than last year. You know, um, with COVID and everything, everybody's out there wanting to get out and take vacations. So the RV parks are filling up pretty quick. We uh, usually only book out for like hard stops when we know we places that we really want to see and, and we know we want to be there for a certain time for an event like last year with the Buffalo Roundup but um, this year I've been booking out all the way to the end of July because um, we're going to be out west in some pretty popular areas Joshua Tree and um, Yosemite and Crater Lake so had to book out in advance just been using uh, different apps to to find different RV parks and found out also that um, Airbnb, if you put in their filter RV, uh, people are renting out their RV pads too. Really? Yeah. So that was that was just another way to look for different different places. You know, some of them may have hookups, some of them may not. And then um, are we taking advantage of any of, any of those? Well, the one outside of Yosemite, I think it was. Yeah, that was a Airbnb um, pad. Actually, it was he had quite a few pads in that park. I think they they were all listed on uh, Airbnb. So that that will be a plus to be able to to have one more place to look at, since you know we're going to some pretty popular spots. So how far advanced did we book from month to month? So we're starting like in April. Right. Um, and you booked all the way through? The end of July. We're at the end of July. So that's pretty much the whole summer. But those those places I had to really do some research and find some that had availability. Because we're, this year we're not going to, we're, we're staying in places a week, at least a week. and um, Minimum of a week. Yeah, minimum of a week. Instead of moving, you know, after four or five days, just to stay put. That saves some money because then we can get a re weekly rate, so that's helpful. Um, and you know. So did you have a lot of problems finding places? Um, some places were yeah pretty booked up already. I mean the really popular ones, yeah you. Like you're, depending on the national parks and stuff. Right, right, and and if it's close to a area that has more availability, some of them don't have as much availability as others. You know different parks or you'll have to go a little bit further out. We, I really didn't want to drive more than, you know, 45 minutes to get to a park. Because yeah, I don't want to do that either. Because <laughs> <laughs> after hiking all day, that's the last thing you want to do is drive back. I so. hear you. So even if it wasn't the nicest park, to me, it was like, okay, just being nearby and as long as it's safe and... But you look at ratings and... and oh, yeah, yeah. You do your ratings, you do your research, and it's not like you're going to put us in a hole in the wall. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> History has proven. You know, we haven't been to any bad parks yet. And uh, we, we've been lucky. I mean, on if, if we went someplace and we didn't feel comfortable, we would just leave. We wouldn't stay around. But this year... Our plans for this year are, we're, we're almost like at 10 different um, national parks. We're planning on going to Big Ben, White Sands, Seguro, I had to write it down because I'm going to forget them all. Joshua Tree, Sequoia, Yosemite. Then we're going to meet a friend of ours that lives in Sonoma. She has a little farm there. We're going to stay with her, maybe visit Napa Valley. Definitely want to go to the Golden Gate Bridge. I want to go to Alcatraz. I want to take some pictures of the Golden Gate Bridge and some video there. Uh, we have a friend in Sacramento. We're going to go visit her. Then we're going to go to Crater Lake National Park, Olympic National Park, North Cascades National Park, and Mount Rainier. And then after that, we're going to go to Bend, Oregon, or at least the plan is to go to Bend, Oregon. There's a small church there with our family of churches, and we're going to be spending a month of August there. So, And that's as far as we've gotten. You know, like I said, Mary said, she booked all the summer trips. Basically, we're booked uh, through... The end of July. End of July, and then August will be in Bend, and then after that it should be easy to find stuff, uh, kind of working our way back home, back to Florida. So, looking forward to spending uh, uh, a lot of time in these beautiful places and creating some nice videos and beautiful pictures for you, and I hope you follow along and share our journey.
Um, we will be posting on a weekly basis. We're also hitting a lot of uh, several har harvest hosts on the way out. And uh, looking forward to a great year. Uh, last year was a little shorter than normal because of the COVID, but uh, this year we're looking forward to some beautiful, beautiful parks. Uh, but before we do that, I got some maintenance to do. So let's go get to this maintenance on the RV. we like to do every year is sanitize our fresh water tank. We have a 90 gallon tank. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use a quarter cup of bleach for every 15 gallons of fresh water. We have 90 gallons, so it's a, a cup and a half for us. I've gone ahead and I measured it out and I just stuck it in a gallon jug just to make it easier to pour inside the, uh, the tank itself. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go inside, we're gonna open up all our faucets till we get the smell of bleach. We're gonna turn it off and we're gonna let it go for six to eight hours. So we'll come back after six or eight hours. We're gonna go ahead and drain our fresh water tank, fill it up with uh, fresh water again, open up all our faucets and just make sure there's no smell of bleach. And at that point, you have a sanitized fresh water tank. So now that we've washed the RV, uh, we pressure cleaned the roof, it's really important to go around and check all your seals, uh, all your seams around the, your AC, your uh, um, shades, and just to make sure uh, there's no cracks or anything like that on the uh, seals themselves. Uh, we're going to be using the lap sealant. I did find one area that has the uh, lap sealant and has some cracks on it, so I wanna make sure I cover those up so we don't have any problems down the road. So I found these little cracks here. I want to make sure I'm going to cover all these up. So I'm going to use Dicor lap sealant and take care of these cracks. Let me show you why they call it Dicor self-leveling. That's what it does. It self-levels. That should take care of the problem. On to the next thing. <laughs> 